Meet Byron Mislowski. Is it a Z? Yeah. That tide washed the body up. Looks like he came off the bridge. Under his own steam? Uniform found a real nice little mountain bike on the bridge walkway. Could be his. I'll know more after I get a look at where he went off. You guys get a report of a missing kid? Nothing yet. Nothing? I think he went into the water sometime around 3 or 4 this morning. What the hell is a kid that young doing out so late by himself? Nothing in his pockets, but we did find this. His name and address stitched into his jacket here. What? You think this is a body dump? Oh, he could have jumped. Could have even fallen. I don't know. I want to hear what the parents got to say. Yeah, me too. Can you get a good picture of his face for me? Neighbor saw the door open. Lock busted up. So he stepped inside to check on the tenant, Prashant. Nearly fainted when he saw the scene. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hold. Oh. Yeah, blood goes all through the place. So where's the body? You tell me. Not here. So that's a problem. Yeah, I didn't know who else to call. I called the coroner. He said he wasn't going to come to the scene unless there was a body. Yeah? Who'd you talk to down there? Da Vinci. Figures. Well, you got to figure this amount of blood, somebody died. Better get forensics down here. The neighbor walk all the way in? I don't know. Well, we'll seize his shoes, see if we can match some of these impressions here. All right? What a mess. Okay. Where did you say he was? On the second Narrows Bridge? We think so, yes. And, um, what was he doing up there? We don't know what happened. And we don't know if he was alone or if somebody was with him. What do you mean with him? You think somebody did this? When was the last time you saw Byron? Um, dinner time? Dinner time? Yeah, we, uh, we ordered him a pizza because we were having dinner with friends. So he was here by himself? He had band practice, and then he has to come back here and be in bed by 10. That's the rule we've got. He was asleep when we got home. Tucked him in. Um, his door was closed. I just thought he was in there. Uh, no, no, I didn't check. What about this morning? His bed was empty. We thought he'd gone to school. Was that usual, not to see him off? No, um, Byron has a lot of extracurricular activities. Uh, he's very bright. Um, this morning he had, uh... Chess club. Yeah. Chess club. And, uh, he had to be there early. He was a very responsible boy. So you had no problems with him at all? Nothing serious. Normal kid. Just last year in June. Yeah, um, he ran away. Why was that? Jack. My ex-husband. Byron was afraid of him. He used to beat him. We all here? Let's get started. We've got him lined up today. He's got extensive trauma from the fall, but there's something else here I thought you should know right away. This boy has a number of older bruises. Also healed green stick fractures on both wrists. So he was abused? He's got chronic rectal tearing. He was sexually abused? As recently as last night, I think. Jesus. What did the parents say it was last night? Music lesson. Did you get a feeling that there was anything wrong in the home? No, it was hard to tell. I mean, they both seemed pretty genuine. Did you recover any semen? Nope. Water pretty well took care of any body fluids we might find. Is there any chance that he got any of these injuries before he went off the bridge? I won't know till they open up and look at the bruising. You think a kid that age has the will to kill himself? If he jumped, he probably thought he had a good reason. He's probably wishing he could fly. Do you know how it happened? Well, we're still trying to piece together Byron's movements from last night, and, uh... <clears throat> it's 
all over the news this morning. You should have warned us. These kids had all kinds of questions. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. The coroner's office has a child psychologist available for cases like this. I'm sure they'll be in touch with you. Uh, about last night, Byron's stepfather said that he had band practice with you. Yeah, in my basement. I'm putting together a little jazz combo of my best private students. Oh. Wasn't Byron a little young for that? Byron was a real natural. Uh, most of my students are teens. They weren't half as good. I'm going to need their names. Well, what time did Byron leave your place last night, about? Oh, 9 o'clock. That's when everyone left. Did he say he was going right home? I had his bike. I thought he was going home. Can you turn the music down, please? Thank you. OK, what time did you leave band practice? Yeah. But who was still there when you left? So what about stepfather? No record. Hard worker, according to his boss. Fixes those leaky condos. He's between jobs. And the ex-husband? Two counts of assault, both alcohol-related. He's street planning on the island. So that's only a short ferry ride, right? Mm -hmm. OK, we'll talk to the boss, see if he's been absent. Anything else? Yeah, I was thinking if the abuse was in the home, the mother might be hiding something, right? right. I figure I'd give her a day to grieve, then maybe take another run No, at no. It. If she's hiding something, you want to take a run at her now. I'm on hold. The kid has call waiting. Hey, uh, Detective Marlowe is here. Oh, yeah? Let me come in. Got a minute? Sure, Bobby, come on in. Just got to take off. What can I do for you? Uh, that was a hell of a thing that happened to that Byron Mislowski going off that bridge. Oh, I sure was. Wow. That was really tough to take. I read in the paper he went to Hoban Elementary. Is that right? You know something about this? The name of the school twigged this old case. And? I was wondering if Byron had been sexually assaulted. Yeah, as a matter of fact, he had been molested. Anything else? No. Just curious. Just curious? If you're just curious, you could have phoned pathology and got this information. You'd have to come over here and fish out of me like this. You're making me curious. Look, there's something I have to check on. If it pans out, then we'll talk, OK? Are you referring like, to an actual conversation where I ask a question and I actually get an answer? That kind of a talk? Yeah. I look forward to something like that, Bobby. Later. OK, Bobby. Sex crimes. Yeah, let's see, look here, the door's been jimmy up. Probably popped with a screwdriver or a crowbar or something like that. Maybe a B&E artist. Hmm? OK, yeah. There's blood. Look at that. All around the door here. Everywhere. Up the back side of the door here. Yeah. Looks like a hell of a fight, huh? Not kidding. Looks like a war. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, blood trail all along the hall here. Yeah. Starts over in the bathroom here. Check this out. I'm warning you. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay. Look right there. Window there is broken, too. Yeah. So, uh, how do you think it went down? Well, see how this place for you. The tenant, he's in the bath or he's in a Johnson on the throne, whatever. The thief comes to the door. He starts breaking in, thinking there's nobody home. Tenant here, he hears the guy breaking in, decides to stick it out in the bathroom here where it's safe. He's going to be quiet till after the guy leaves. Okay. Right? Now, the thief comes through the door. He's probably a junkie, right? He's scoping the place out, decides to check out the bathroom. Yeah, looking for medications or whatever. Exactly. No surprise. The tenant's in here. They freak each other out. They start having a fight. They're all over the place. Bash the head off the mirror there. The guy's bleeding. Blood all over the place. What do you think of that so far? Well, this blood comes from more than just a head wound. Also, you've got uh, only the one set of footprints here. Well, let's see, the guy goes through the window first. Hmm? His arm goes through, he's yanking it back, slashing open an artery. Arterial blood, yeah. yeah. As for these footprints here, 
Well, the thief takes off first. He takes off ahead of the guy. The guy goes after him. Yeah. Well, that would explain the one set of footprints. Yeah. Now the uh, the thief gets away, and the tenant's following after him, and he's bleeding along the way, right? And he's walking in his own blood. I think these are his own footprints. Well, maybe. He's got the right shoe size. I checked the closet out over there. I think he walked in his own blood, check it. Yeah, okay. I don't know. Maybe something completely different happened. Who knows? Maybe maybe the guy's not even dead. Yeah, maybe just down a few pints of type A positive. Truck driver drops his rig in the yard, does a routine check under it. I guess to find roadkill up under there. And he sees this body crammed above the axle. Now, he hasn't checked under there for a couple of days, so could have been there at least that long. Maybe he's a hitchhiker. He's out on the highway late at night, hitching, gets hit. I hadn't thought of that. Any idea on the body? No. OK, I'm not going to be able to get to this room. All right, let me know. I'm going to talk to the driver again and see what he remembers. Thanks. I always like to put a face to these things. So you want to tell me what you know about this now? Kind of complicated. That's all right, Bobby. I just want the uncomplicated version anyway. If you have information regarding young Byron's death right there, let's hear it. Let's hear it now. I have a source I need to protect. I can appreciate that. There could be other kids involved that also need protection. All right. All right, now you've really got my attention. You made us play a game. Egyptian pyramid. Yeah. We'd, uh, we take off our clothes. Boys and girls? Yeah. And then we'd um, pile up onto each other and make a pyramid. And where did this happen? Church basement had a rec room. And you said this is after choir practice? Yeah. But I don't know if it was the choir director or janitor or another parent or, or who it was exactly. Would he make you touch him or touch each other? Um, touch each other. And then uh, you get a, um, a camera and he'd take pictures. And he'd. Uh... It's okay. Minor, just you take your time. All right. Then he'd, uh, he'd take one of us to the closed closet. It was dark. And uh, he'd, um, he'd uh, do, do it up your bum. It hurt like hell. You said you think this all happened. You were about eight years old. Yeah, I didn't remember it all at first. I mean, um, I mean, I remembered it, but it was like the way you remember stuff from when you were a kid. So how is it you're putting it all together now? Well, I just I always knew something bad had happened when I was little. Mm -hmm. I just feel it, and then I started getting these pictures in my mind, and after a while they started coming clear it scared me Reiner first came to me about three years ago but uh, we hit a dead end I couldn't remember the man's name but now you do that's him Mr. Zito Photos. Place looked like a slaughterhouse. Any luck locating a body? No, nothing. Just vanished. And the family? Well, according to the cousin, both parents flew back to Bombay apparently to find Prashanta wife. Well, any girlfriend here? 
Uh, not that the cousin knew of, but they might not be telling the whole story to the family. Well, so, uh, girlfriend's pissed off range wife who's coming to town decides to show him just how hurt she is. No, uh, except the, uh, the lock on the door was broken. That sounds like an intruder, not a lover. Lover's got a key, right? Well, have you, uh, tried contacting his parents? Uh, the, the parents are staying with an uncle, so I'm trying to track down an officer who speaks Hindi. Help me place a call. Anything else look promising? Yeah, the, uh, the neighbor lives across from him. Uh, his name's Trip Mesker. He's the one who went into the apartment, found all the blood smeared everywhere, and uh, he called homicide. The rest of the neighbors say he's a bit of a shit disturber, so I had a look up and uh, found a sheet. And? Uh, break and enter, assault, robbery. Well, that's a good place to start. Yeah, I figure too. The music teacher used to fill in for the choir director at Reiner's church. That's why his name came up. Did you show Reiner a picture of the music teacher back then? We never got that far with it. Now, the first time Reiner saw a photo of Richard Zito was last night. You have anything else that points to Zito? He recently got engaged to a woman with two young boys. A am I missing the significance of that? Pedophiles often marry women with young kids. That's not proof of anything. Well, if the boy was abused, and he was, then it might indicate the music teacher's at it again. Now, that worries me. It should worry you. Yeah, it worries me. What do you want from us? In my experience, the best way to do this is to talk to some of the other students and see if any of them will come forward. Oh, no. Uh-uh. First thing you got, those damn dolls with the pubic hair out, and the kids are making up stories about witches eating babies. You don't know how I work. I don't suggest anything to them. All right, maybe not. But you and I both know that when it comes to talking to the police, kids want to please, and they'll lie to do it. Not every kid. If we could get some direct evidence linking a homicide to Zito, then we wouldn't have to worry about talking to these kids about abuse in the first place. You have some I don't know about? One of the uh, band members said that when she left the music teacher's house, Byron was still there, so maybe he never made it home that night. Look, I got maybe enough for a warrant right there. So do we. Any evidence you seize under your warrant's gonna screw up my pedophile case and it's gonna get tossed out of court. Well, the same thing applies to us under your yeah, warrant. Yeah, but okay, 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 I've heard enough here now. This is what we're gonna do. That's good. My main concern here is obviously we got, a, we got a death of a child. Now, if I suspect that child died in that music teacher's house, I can go in there into the coroner's act and I can seize any evidence I want, and you guys can take a look at what I got, and there's no problem there. And then we can talk about whose case it is. Is that all right with you? All right, we'll go with that. Good. All right? No. I got some concerns with this. Well, what about the parents now? You know, when they start catching wind of this investigation that's brewing up here in the Right, one parent talks to another and... That's right, now we got a fire start and it's gonna burn anybody that gets close to it. So, I know about your concerns. You know, I don't have a job. That's a crime like half the guys in the country are in trouble, huh? No, I'm just asking a couple questions. So, where were you two nights ago? At home. Well, did you hear anything? Any noises, fights? Like Nothing at all. Because your neighbor over here, uh, Stanley, is it? He was saying uh, he heard all kinds of banging around over there. It's kind of odd you didn't hear anything living right across the hall here. Yeah, that is odd. Yeah? You ever been in that apartment before? Uh, yeah. just, when I, uh, uh, just when I saw the door open and all the blood and they called you guys. Yeah? yeah. Never another time before that? No. no. You sure? You see what's going on in there? That's an ident team, right? If there's anything at all in there with your prints on it, I mean anything, it's just a matter of time. I was in there a couple of nights ago because I lent him my VCR. You loaned him a VCR? Right. Okay. That's right. Well, how was he when you went to get your VCR back? Well, we didn't have a big involved conversation. I, how's the weather? Like that. Mm -hmm. I just asked for my VCR, that was it. Is this all your videos? Yeah. Do you want to be careful with those records, please? Just, I've got a lot of rare albums in there. I understand you have a rehearsal room down in your basement, do you? Well, there's nothing down there but a piano and, and music charts. Take a look. I'm gonna go take a peek around your place. What do you think I'd find there, huh? We're gonna take your computer, sir. Where is it? Maybe 
he's been on the net to any pedophile chat rooms, we might get lucky. I got my computer woman take a look at that. Uh, I can give her a hand with that. I know what to look for. No, I gotta tell you right now, I don't see anything here in these boxes. I don't have around my own goddamn house. Ribbed with spermicide. Love letters. Hey, you have a copy of Alice in Wonderland at your place, too? Of course. I used to read it to my daughter when she was... She's the kid. It was hers. Yeah, well, the music teacher doesn't have any kids. Just students. So what's he doing with it? Alice in Wonderland was my favorite book when I was a kid. You ever see the photos of Lewis Carroll took of the real Alice? Yeah, it was his niece or somebody. She was very pretty. Yeah, some people think that he might have had a thing for her. Oh, yeah. Huh. Well, thank you for ruining my childhood. Check these out. Photography is a hobby. Why just kids? This isn't a kid. No, but most of these photos are of kids, right? Mostly young boys. I teach music to kids. Kids are available as models. Boys aren't as shy. They have, they have fun posing for me. But don't you have to get uh, a release to get people to pose for you? Yeah, well, I mean, if they're underage, you have to have their parents' permission. Did you get anybody's permission? That's my fiance. Mm-hmm. She's, what, 26? She looks younger. And you're what, 40 something? You talked to her? This morning. You know, she wasn't too happy when we showed her that picture. You told her that you tore it up. She was your girlfriend. Would you tear it up? I don't have naked pictures of my wife. Well, maybe you should. Is it true that you asked your girlfriend to shave off her pubic hair? That's a lie. She didn't tell you that. You're an asshole. Kids aren't all hairy and spoiled by puberty, are they? I don't think of kids like that. How do you think of them? Do you think of them as students or as friends? Do you feel paternal towards them? Is that how you feel? A little bit of all of that. I don't know. I like kids. I never stop to define why. How about love? Do you love them? Some are more lovable than others. But kids can be sexual, can't they? I mean, you've seen that. You know, little girls get all coquettish and flirty. The little boys, when you roughhouse with them and you have to get physical. You know, you don't have to be embarrassed to admit it. I mean, kids can be seductive sometimes. OK, so kids can be sexual beings. People don't like to hear that, but it's true to some extent. So what? They know exactly what they're doing when they're sitting in your lap. When you get aroused, they can feel that, and they like it. Yeah, we understand that. But that's not the way it was with Byron. It was more than that. Byron was my student. But he was special, wasn't he? He was one of the lovable ones. And he loved you back, right? I mean, really loved you. And he didn't leave music practice with the other kids like you said, did he? I thought he did, and then I... I turned around, he was still standing in the kitchen. And he looked, he looked lonely. He was a lonely little boy, you know. I can understand why you wouldn't want to tell us about that. You can't even put your arm around a kid to encourage him or give a kid a hug anymore without people thinking something. Do you remember another little boy, Reiner Paget? He remembers you. I want my lawyer. Here you go. So you didn't feel a bump or anything, huh? Were you carrying a full load? Just dropped my load down there off Powell Street at the rail yard. And where did you go after that? What was your route? I make a right turn there at Clark Drive. OK. Could anybody have been standing on the corner? Maybe you didn't see him cut the curb. I don't cut curbs. But you have a blind spot, right? Yeah, but I'm telling you, I still would have seen him if he was there. So where did you go after that? 
Right straight up Clark Drive to the yard there by the Fraser River. Central lane all the way. Okay. If you remember anything else. Anything. Sure. You know who the guy was? No. First time this has ever happened to me. I feel like shit. Well, that's some kind of solid physical evidence. Well, what about Reiner's statement? Come on, that's an allegation. That's not evidence. Look, I don't have a choice. I'm going to have to show the music to you to the door. What? You just get in his car and drive a thousand miles and start acting out a sick fantasy on some other kids in some other grade school in a town we've never even heard of. Look, nobody's giving up here. Which is why I'd appreciate it, Detective Marlowe, if you'd hold off on your pedophile case until we're sure this isn't a homicide. Are you going to talk to the kids? I need to know. No, nope, not at this point. Not at this point? No. Nope. You know, once this teacher's name gets spread all over this, these kids will need counseling. They will not need interrogating. I am well aware of the problems in getting credible evidence from child witnesses. Then you know that they're not witnesses, they're victims. Well, that's a fine line, and I'm going to walk it. Okay. You'll be the first. Got a uniform showing the music teacher out by way of the elevator shaft. This isn't over. He'll be back. Look, I'm going to call the principal. There's no way the music teachers get near those kids until we get this thing sorted out. No, let me do it. I want to impress uh, upon him the need for discretion. OK, you're cool. All right. OK, we're going right back to the beginning on this. Now, I want you to follow up on the Reiner Padgett angle. But don't just concentrate on him. I want you to talk to the stepfather, the mother, the ex. I, I already tried Byron's mother again, but she was too shook up to talk. If you like, I'll give it another shot. No, I want Leo to talk to her. You can talk to uh, the pathologist. Thank you, that's all. Truck driver is pretty upset. He can't sleep, and he says he's afraid to drive again. Well, if it's any constellation, I don't think the truck is what killed him. The tissue on the tire treads doesn't have any associated bruising. They're post-mortem. So maybe this guy was dead before the truck hit him? There are some wounds with bruising, but they're different from the tar treads. It's also mangled. It's hard to tell. OK. Thanks. I'll check back with you when you finish. I'm not sure what it means, but take a look. And what am I looking at? Tissue from Byron Maslowski's rectum. Shiny bits are metal fragments. Metal fragments? You sure about that? Chrome, according to the lab. Well, what's Chrome? Like a, a tool, a kitchen utensil, a sex toy? Musical instrument. Could be. Now yeah, this could help. The man we suspect of molesting Byron is a music teacher. You already meet him as a whole day of school. Now what the hell do you want? I want you to know I'm going to be watching you. You take a piss. And be making sure you zip up. I haven't done anything. No, you just haven't been caught at it yet. Eventually, one of your students is going to talk to me about you. When one of them starts talking, they all will. It's just a matter of time. Get away from me. Get away from me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wouldn't bother coming to work tomorrow morning. It's been suspended. You're saying the music teacher was using something to, um, hurt Byron with. We know that Byron was abused with an object of some kind. We just don't know what it was. I don't understand. Why didn't he say anything? He was probably afraid to. This man, his music teacher, I know him. He doesn't seem like the kind that would. But I guess none of them do, do they? 
I need to ask you some questions. Yes, I want to help. Thank you. Because my sergeant is very picky, and she wants me to go over every detail. I understand that you have to be careful. Good. Um, for instance, uh, in Byron's trips to the hospital, for example, the time that he broke his arm. Christmas. Um, oh, uh, when did you meet Byron's stepdad? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And how did you say that he treated Byron again? I just got off the phone with the Minister of Education. Did you call the principal of Hoban Elementary and warn him he had a pedophile working there? That's not what I said. Well, that's what he heard. No, I... I... Come on, the parents are going to read in the papers that the, the teacher there is going to be investigated in a homicide. I thought I should get down there, give that principal a heads up, and get up some counseling for... Instead, the principal, who also happens to be a neighbor of the music teacher, has taken it upon himself to start a goddamn crusade. Jesus. What in hell were you thinking? Ah, oh, Jesus. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, I think so. Look, it, you asked me to go through the music teacher's letters, and I found something you should read. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Are you Reverend Lyman? Yes. Could I have a word, just briefly, sir? Um, my name's Dominic Da Vinci. I'm with the coroner's uh, office. Yes. How, how can I help you? It concerns this letter. I'm just wondering about. Uh, is this in fact your signature? How did you get this? Well, the man you wrote the letter to. Richard Zito, yes. Right. He's under investigation right now in the death of a child. Oh. That has to be wrong. Richard, he teaches music. I, I can't believe it. Not because of the letter. No, I know. It says in your letter here that Mr. Reiner Padgett telephoned you, accusing you and two others in your parish of uh, sexually abusing him. Yes, that was four years ago. I wrote to the other men, informing them of the accusations against us. One of them was Richard. Well, what I was curious about is that you go on to say that the uh, Mr. Padgett here wasn't even sure which one of the three of you was in fact guilty of that. He wasn't even sure it was the right church. Was it? Did he go to church here? Yes, I remember him vaguely. Vaguely. Did he ever contact you again, sir? No, thank God. This letter isn't going to be made public, is it? If anybody should see it, I don't have to tell you what that would mean. No, sir, you don't. I appreciate your time. I really do. Thanks. Reverend Lyman was the pastor at Reiner's church. Da Vinci says that four years ago, Reiner Paget called Lyman up and accused him and two other church members of molesting him when he was a little kid. One of the guys he accused was Zito. So we already know about Zito. Mm -hmm. But here's the problem. Reiner said he didn't remember any of it until he started seeing a therapist. That's when the memory started coming back to him, which is not what he told Detective Marlowe. Oh, boy, here we go, the black hole of therapy. I don't have to tell you, we're facing a huge problem here. Recovered memory, false memory, whatever the hell kind of memory it is, it's shit for evidence in court. Did you get anywhere with Mrs. Mislowski? She thinks I'm accusing her of being a bad mom because she let Phil discipline Byron. And whatever else Phil may have been doing to Byron or not been doing to Byron, she doesn't know, or she's not saying. So the music teacher could still be our guy. I had a chat with the parents in India, right? According to uh, what they told me, Prashant had epilepsy. Oh, well, epilepsy could explain a lot of this. He's in the bathroom here, see? He's standing at the uh, mirror, suffers an epileptic seizure, starts thrashing around. Yeah, smashes his head on the mirror, and that starts him bleeding, right? And he's bashing all over the walls. And he's flailing around, blood's flying everywhere, smashed up against the window, now he's bleeding even worse. Yeah, falls down, gets up. 
I only found tread marks for one pair of shoes. That's consistent with them being alone. Yeah, so he heads for the phone over here. Right? Comes on over, knocks over the phone table. Now he's too messed up to call 911. Totally disoriented, yeah. On his own steam, he heads out of the apartment. Well, we don't know if he's still seizuring or what, but we know he's still bleeding. Yeah. He bleeds out down in the street, falls onto the road. Oh, well, Clark Drive out there is a major truck route. You'd think somebody would have seen something. Yeah, no, there's a question. Also, we didn't find any epileptic seizure medication. Now, if he ran out, where's the empty bottle? Mm. Hey, you, wait a minute. What? What do you want? What's the matter? Everything all right? You look a little nervous. Oh, yeah, no, everything's OK. Yeah? Wait, wait, wait where are you going? Come here, what's your hurry? Why, what are you hassling me for? I told you everything. Yeah? If I look in this pocket right here, what do you think I'm going to find? Nothing. I ain't got nothing in there. Nothing? Listen, between you and me and the devil, I don't give a shit what you're carrying, all right? If you don't come straight with me right now, I'm gonna take a look in your pocket. Is that what you want me to do? You wanna look in your pocket? You're gonna tell me everything you know right now. Hey, Miss Sonny. Hey. Cause of death was exsanguination. Led to death. Yeah. But not from being hit by the truck. I went over his injuries, and somewhere in that mess, I found slash wounds that were pre-mortem. Whoa, slash wounds? Sounds like some kind of weapon. You're trying to tell me this is a homicide? Yeah, I thought so until I found a lesion in his brain. Aneurysm? Nope, epileptic. I think he was having a seizure when he died. There were bite marks all over his tongue. So the guy's having a fit. He wanders out into traffic and... Except for the fact that he has glass and mirror fragments in his wounds. How did he get those? Off the pavement, maybe? You have any idea who this guy is? Prince weren't in the system. I've got a forensic dentist working on his teeth. Probably somebody out there looking for him right now. Yeah, if he has someone who cares. Nice. Bobby, can I talk to you for a sec? Yeah. You were asked to back off this case. But the goddamn uh, principal phoned the parents and they called my sergeant. I didn't have a choice. I mean, I had to start interviewing the kids. I mean, I'm one step ahead of a shitstorm here. You better take a look at this letter. Reiner names music teacher. Look, that can't be right, because he said he couldn't remember a name. When did the music teacher get this? Full year before Reiner came to see you. But it says here, he accuses two other men of maybe molesting him. That's right. Reiner goes into therapy, and next thing you know, he's pointing fingers. Shit. I was really careful about that. He said he didn't get any of this out of therapy. I believed him. Shit. Shit. I really believed that. No, he fooled you. Yeah. Prashant's junkie neighbor admitted to stealing the uh, seizure medication when he went to get his VCR back. So he's going to sell the VCR to buy drugs? Yeah. Goes in, sees the epilepsy medication. It's a barbiturate, right? Gets you high. Right. Decides to take that, too. No problem is we still don't have a body. No, we got nothing for missing persons. All right, we'll check with the morgue, see if they got any DOAs that are looking for a name. Okay. The body's in the kitchen. He used to go in there sometimes, into Byron's room. He'd shut the door to punish him, he said. I was taking out the garbage and a dog had tipped over the can and I saw this line in the bottom. Phil was so careful with his tools, why would he throw it away? So I asked him about it and he started making excuses and so I said I was gonna show it to the police. That's when he admitted he had used it to punish Byron with when he was bad. He said he hit Byron on the bum with it. 
He swore he didn't do anything else. <laughs> he lied. I think you should know it was the stepfather. It was Byron's stepfather that was abusing him. Oh, yeah. That makes me feel much better. That's great. You know, if there's anything I could do that would help, I, I would like to do it. Seriously. Nobody can help me. I called you as soon as I remembered. There were four of them. And they were wearing black robes. Not sure who they were. I know that one of them was Satan. I know I'll remember the other ones. I can see their faces. remember their names. You believe me, don't you?